Hey guys, Wolfie here and welcome back to the channel. As always, the usual disclaimer. Any opinion here is mine and mine alone. Now this is yet another special presentation for Ruby tied to volume 9 chapter 8. And I'm going to explore some elements of foreshadowing. Because if you really think about what Ruby did when she drank that cup of tea with the leaf inside. And then she goes into another realm. Or wherever she was, she's slated to go with Little and Crescent Rose. I do feel there is some foreshadowing. But where did it begin? And wh who within Team Ruby did this involve? To answer the second question. Who within Team Ruby did the foreshadowing Volume 9 Chapter 8 involve? It actually involved Weiss. And it also involved Yang. Now the question is. Where did the foreshadowing begin? So, to answer the first question, where did the foreshadowing begin? And for my answer, it is this particular scene in Volume 5, Chapter Number 6, known by its song. This particular scene here, and this is the same episode where Weiss, Ruby, and Yang re reunite. And with this particular scene, Raven is with Weiss and Yang. They have their little chit-chat over tea. That Vernal is serving the three. Now, between the three, Raven's the only one, only one who drank the tea. Weiss did not touch hers, neither did Yang. Now, in this particular conversation, there's a lot of things that like, came out to light. Where Raven was talking bad about Ty, Crow, and Ruby. Where Yang got into a bit of a temper tantrum. Say, don't you dare talk about my family. Where Vernal and Weiss were like, calm down, man. It's like, calm down. And Raven was like, you gotta li listen to your teammates, all that stuff. They never steered you wrong. Although Raven may not have been aware, you know, that Blake left everybody without an explanation. Weiss was not was the only one of the team who did not go back to um, where she's from, Atlas, on her own accord. So, the fact that she got angry, she stayed angry for a little bit. It was like, not a good look for Yang. Because it's like, that could very well have be, that, this, this whole thing could very well be her reaction. Like, in the remaining two chapters of Volume 9. Now, with wife, it's like... She was starting to be, I mean, I'll, I'm going to have to explain this in the next, uh, in, in the next shot here. So, um, Weiss was asked by Yang here, it was like, you don't believe anything Raven says. And then Weiss was like, not all of it. Because there are certain things here and there that Weiss was like, starting to question. And Yang was even told to question everything. Which I feel led to Ruby's downfall starting in Volume 8. Because you have to remember, beginning of Volume 8. Yang was the one who questioned Ruby to her face, her decision making. And that really started a bit of a rift. And then you have to remember other parts in the later aspects of Volume 8 where Ruby was starting to push Yang away because it seems that she had a feeling that Yang was wanting to do her own thing. Which supports Raven's like whole thing about not every huntsman wants to be in the Huntsman Academies for the same reason. And I do feel this is where Yang maybe points some fingers in anger because Ruby drank the tea and left everybody. And then we're going to have to wait and see with chapters 9 and 10 of volume 9. But the fact is, like, Yang and Weiss chose not to drink the tea. Raven did. And then it was like the tea aspect of that scene turned out to be a very vital clue in my personal opinion because it's like they didn't drink the tea but Ruby did. So that's clue number one. Now clue number two, we're going to go into the same episode known by its song. But we're going to ask, going to focus a little aspect on Ruby here in the sense of the very end of it. Now when Crow, like, say, say, hey, Ruby, calling Ruby, you know, he, she'll be right there. It took her a little bit. 
She drops whatever she has in her hands because, lo and behold, Weiss and Yang were there with Crow. And Ruby was all was very apologetic. She felt bad for leaving. She didn't know if Yang really wanted her to stick around. And it goes to show you, it's like, Ruby was doing all that she could. And another item here that I want to point out, I'm going to zoom in real quick, is that you have a look at the facial expressions. Now, Yang was a little hesitant to hug Weiss when Ruby was like, Weiss? It's like, and I, the reason why I feel Yang was a little hesitant because I do feel that there are unresolved tensions between the two. And by the two, Yang and Weiss. And that is going to affect Ruby. But you see here, it's like, Ruby was like super happy because her, her buddy is back. Her bestie. Yang, you know, it's like, we all know they're not that close. Now, hit number three. And it comes into the very next episode. Rest and Resolutions. Now, Ren provides a very vital hint here. And he mentions something about people not being the same person that they once were. Meaning that when they entered the beacon, when they left for whatever reason. And the line goes something along, the, what he says is along the lines of, we're not the same person, we're, we will never stop growing. Meaning that people are always going to be changing. Change is a constant. Meaning that for me, for example, the way you see me now, how I look, will not be the same. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I need some water here shortly. <sighs> but anyway, it's like the way people see me now physically might not be the same as the next day, <clears throat> the next week, the next year, so on and so forth. And the fact that we're never, we as people never stop growing, it's like people are going to change. People are eventually going to drift apart. If you look at Oscar Oz, it's like his little speech, like later on, it's like it very much echoes what Ren has been saying. <sighs> and what doesn't help Yang's case here in the sense of like not noticing certain things about Ruby is that People are always going to change. Their opinions change. <clears throat> that people as people change. So that's that on that with um, rest and resolutions. Now the final clue here, or some of the final clues, lie in chapter 8 of volume 5, which is alone together. <sighs> now Ruby... Well, this is where the whole thing with Ren, you know, he was right on the money. You could tell here that Ruby really misses Blake. And you can see here by Weiss's facial expression that she is in agreement with Ruby. Yang at first disagreed really bad. It's like a bit of the temper, temper tantrum was starting to come back. Now, I actually had to check my time here real quick, you know, just to make sure. That's the, so that way I could keep track of certain things. So, but anyway, Yang's initial reaction about Blake when it was brought up by Ruby was really bad. <sighs> and is that is the whole thing that supports the thing? People change in every aspect. People may not like this at one point, but like it at a later time. Which means, you know, Ruby was a bit of a, was a, is, has been an avid coffee drinker. But you have to remember, Volume 9, Chapter 8, she was drinking some tea. And we all know who in Team Ruby likes their tea. And that being Blake. See if I can get this back out here. And then, of course, we all remember the whole temper tantrum between um, that Yang through and Ruby and Y. So it's like they were, like, fearful. Now, it's a um, little bit later on that Weiss and Yang have their, their heartfelt chit-chat. Now, we do see here, in the sense of the whole thing with changing, and then you saw the, in, the, in the signs of Ruby and Yang, you know, drifting apart. 
Me that we know that we know for sure that this is where Yang talks about Blake in a bit more extensive detail. And we see a bit of a flaw on Yang in the sense of she assumed a lot of stuff about Weiss before Weiss reveals the whole the real story of the Shi family. Meaning that it's not sunshine and rainbows like you think it is. There's been thing, a lot of things that have been going on. Now, granted, Weiss could have talked about her older sister, Winter, who Ruby actually has met in Volume 3. I forgot the exact chapter. But at the same time, we do know that Weiss is correct on one very major item. Is that one's version of loneliness is not the same as the next person's. Meaning that Weiss, like, her fa the, the 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 whole thing with her family, the Shni family, it's like it's not as like it's not sunshine and rainbows like everybody thought it was, and it's something that Yang was assuming for the longest time. And it's but it's like Weiss went on saying that Blake's version differs than yours, differs than mine, and the admission of Weiss knowing that she and Yang are not as close. Hinting at further, hinting at tensions, it's like Ruby's version may not be the same. And in Volume Nine, that proved to be the case. And why, you know, Ruby, you know, checks in on them later. You know, everything is going to be, everything is all right. Unfortunately for Yang, what what Yang is like not realizing that Ruby was probably falling apart since Volume Seven. And we're going, and I don't have the image on here for you guys to see, but we do know the specific scene in Volume 7 where Blake and Yang go clubbing, Weiss goes to the cinema, and this is where Ruby feels for the very first time that the team is drifting apart alongside Ruby and Yang and their sisterly relationship. So, um, and the whole thing with what happens here is that you have to think about the reactions between Weiss and Yang. At this moment in time. And by that, Yang here as well as Weiss have two very different reactions. Meaning that Weiss here was beyond heartbroken. She's disguising it the best she can. The best that she's able to. And I was looking at this very closely. It looks like Weiss here is doing everything she can to, to not cry. Because you can tell her eyes are about to water up really bad. Whereas Yang, I don't think she's really shedding any tears. Although, in this particular image, she actually has Blake to support her. Whereas Weiss has practically no one at this point. Because you have to remember... Weiss lost just about everything besides Winter, as well as Whitley and Willow. Blake has a bit of a backup plan. Weiss, not so much. And this is very much the reason why I feel the, that trilogy episodes, known by its song, Rest of Resolutions, and Alone Together, were the beginnings of the Volume 9 Chapter 8 foreshadowing. Because the tea, Raven was the only one who drank it. Weiss did not touch her cup of tea. Neither did Yang. Although, Weiss start, started to understood certain things that Raven was saying. Although, she was in denial about the rest. Yang, however, was very much in denial the entire way. In my personal opinion. If you look at the follow, if, if you look at the end of um, Known by Its Song... Yang was hesitant about hugging Weiss, although Ruby was beyond happy to see her. Now, in the following episode, Rest of Resolutions, it's like, Ren talks about the whole thing about change. People are always going to change. Now, the direction of change that Yang is going in differed than the direction Ruby was going. Now, granted, Weiss is like slightly starting to stray in that direction. However, we see more often than not, Weiss's direction and sense of change is closer, in sense of like 
the alignment is closer to Ruby than Yang. Meaning that the reasoning to be a huntress is to make things better, but not perfect. <clears throat> Whereas in Yang, Volume 6, Chapter 2, it's like, if there's money involved, I'm for it. Which reveals the whole thing with that direction. When people change, it's like, certain things may not matter as much. And with Yang's like reasoning being a lot, starting to be, feel more different than Ruby, although Wise and to some extent Blake being more closer to Ruby, it's like, it's like, okay, something that should have been seen should have been like, been looked at a little bit more closely. And then if you look at Alone Together, the final piece of the puzzle is that. Yang was, in a way, was starting to show her true colors in the sense of her being more worried about Blake than Ruby. And Yang being, like, having to understand the definition of loneliness. It will differ from one person to the next. For some, for some, it's like loneliness meaning that they have no friends. They did everything they could to, you know, have at least one genuine friend or whatever. But their attempts have been futile and, and defeated. For others, it's like people leaving you behind. And for others, and for people like Blake, who's an only child as far as we know, it's like, it's the whole thing with having a sibling, you know, it's like be able to like do things, varying things with, regardless if it's feminine or masculine things. In conclusion, I do feel that Volume 5, Chapter 6 through 8, that's three consecutive episodes, featured the very first hints of the foreshad of foreshadowing that we have seen in varying aspects of Volume 9, especially Volume 9, Chapter 8. Now, I will add here that <clears throat> another element in the foreshadowing comes in Volume 6, Chapter 2, which we all know... What, exactly what happened here. No one mentions it's winter, but Weiss was like mentioned as to get her in there in advance for the team. And it's if you think about what Blake is, was saying, is that she, Weiss was in fact reported missing. Although, what is this like Blake assumed that Weiss was still the SDC heiress when we know it hasn't been the case since volume four. And in addition, it's just like Yang blindly agreeing with Blake on that matter without realizing this could mean the end of Team Ruby because the whole thing with, you know, at least seeing, you know, policies of like, you know, who can leave, who can stay, that sort of thing. Ruby was the only one who understood Weiss's concerns. But when it comes down to the remainder of Team Ruby, they should have been checking on Ruby. Instead of been check, looking after themselves so much. Especially in a team setting. And that's all I have for this video. But before I sign off, I am working on the whole Bumblebee opinion um, project. Again, it's like I, I want to make sure my thoughts are clear and concise. That's probably going to be about either May or June when I get around to filming it. Because that way I can like, express my thoughts on that with as much evidence as possible. So with that, I'm done. With Wolfie here signing off, I will catch you all on the flip side.